Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So today we're going to be seeing uh, Euler's formula. And Euler's formula is one of the nicest results you'll come across in all your maths. Whatever level of maths you end up doing. This, in my opinion, is one of the nicest results out there. And today we're going to be seeing a proof without the use of Taylor series. Now when Leonard Euler first discovered this uh, nice theorem right here, this nice formula, he actually used Taylor series which you probably don't know much about or anything about at the moment. So I'll just show you a proof without the use of Taylor series. Okay, so the proof goes as follows. So let f of theta equal e to the negative i theta into cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, now, here we're going to have to just assume that we can differentiate complex functions. Uh, you'll just have to take my word on it, but you can differentiate complex functions. Okay, so if we take the derivative here, so, if we wanted to differentiate this, we just treat i as a constant here. So when you're differentiating, you'll just treat i as if it was a number like 2 or something. So when you differentiate an exponential function, you multiply by the derivative of negative i theta. That's cos theta plus i sine theta. And here we're using the product rule. So we've differentiated the first one and multiplied by the second part. Now we have to differentiate the second part and multiply by the first part. So the derivative of the second part, and remember, i here is just a constant. So when we differentiate cos theta, we get minus sine theta. And we get i cos theta. Okay, now we can distribute this minus i through this brackets here. And we get e to the negative i theta, negative i cos theta. Now we'll get minus i squared sine theta, and minus i squared is just a plus, so we get plus sine theta, plus e to the negative i theta, minus sine theta, plus i cos theta. Okay, now we can factor out the e to the negative i theta and we get minus i cos theta plus sine theta minus sine theta plus i cos theta okay now you'll notice that this i cos theta cancels with the minus i cos theta and the minus sine theta cancels with the sine theta and so we're left with e to the negative i theta times 0, which is simply 0. So we have that the derivative of this function is equal to 0. So what does this mean? If the derivative, which is f dash theta, equals 0, then the original function the original function is a constant right so if you differentiate a function and you get 0 that means that the original function must have been a constant so we have so therefore f dash theta whoop not f dash f of theta, the original function, is equal to k. So it's just a constant. And this is for all theta. OK. Now, we need to determine the value of k. So if we plug in, say, theta equals to 0, so f of 0 equals... Now, what's f of 0? f of 0 is just substituting 0 into this up here. We get e to the negative i 0 cos 0 plus i sine 0 
Okay, e to the negative i0, that's e to the negative 0, which is just a 1. Now, cos 0, that's a 1, plus i sine 0, that's 0i. Zero and now this, well this is equal to k, this is equal to the constant. Because for any value of theta, so that includes theta equal to 0, because any value of theta, this function is equal to k. So therefore we have k, oops, k is equal to 1. Okay. Alright. Now, if k is equal to 1, then f of theta is equal to 1. Alright, what's f of theta? f of theta is e to the negative i theta cos theta plus i sine theta. That's equal to 1. Now I can multiply both sides by e to the negative i theta, sorry, e to the positive i theta, and I get, so it will cancel with this side, cos theta plus i sine theta is equal to e to the i theta. And that concludes our proof. Now I just wanted to mention this special case. So when theta is equal to pi, what do we get? We get cos of pi plus i sine pi is equal to e to the i pi. Okay, what's cos of pi? Cos of pi is minus 1. i sine pi, that's going to be a 0. So plus 0 i equals e to the i pi. And so you get this amazing result. If you add 1 to both sides, you get the amazing e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. This is widely regarded as the most beautiful identity in maths because it includes the five most fundamental numbers that we use in our in most of our maths all into one identity. It's wrapped up into one nice relationship. So it uses e which is the natural number. We use that in most of our calculus. i which is the imaginary unit the square root of minus 1, that extends our numbers into the complex numbers. Well, pi, we all know how great pi is. It's the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of a circle. It's transcendental, it's irrational, all those great features of pi. We have 1, which is the multiplicative identity. So what do I mean by that? So just 1 times x is equal to x. And 0, which is the additive identity just means 0 plus x is equal to 0. Now, you might not think these are very remarkable, but they do form the basis. In fact, all these five numbers form the basis of most of our maths now. So, again, we've just proved Euler's formula by letting f of theta equal e to the minus i theta cos theta plus i sine theta, finding out that this in fact equals 1, and so we come up with a very nice relationship. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video.